Hey guys, this is going to be a video about file sharing between Linux and Windows. So this is going to be uh, accessing files on a Linux server using mounted drives on a uh, Windows machine. So stuff like uh, you know network file systems. It's very convenient. It's the best way, uh, or the the most simple way, once it's set up to uh, access files on a Linux host. We're going to be using software called Samba, which is uh, one of the most widely used SMB hosts for Linux. And we have a Linux machine that's going to host it, and we have a Windows machine that we're going to have connect to it. So this is a fresh install of Linux over here. I've tweaked a couple things, but it's basically an empty system. So the first thing we need to do is set up the server, which is going to require two packages to be installed. First, we need to install Samba, and then another package called libpam smb pass. And with this, uh, well, the first one is obviously the server. The second one is a package that will synchronize your Linux passwords with the Samba passwords. Because the Samba server keeps a separate database for your passwords than Linux does because Windows file sharing handles authentication differently, uh, you need this to synchronize the passwords. That doesn't happen automatically, but uh, if you install this, it will. So that install has completed, so we now have a default installation of Samba server on our Linux machine. So I've switched over to slash SRV. This is where our shares are going to be. So right now, slash SRV is empty. We're going to make a directory called temp, and this is whatever user you want to be able to connect and uh, access files. Uh, if you want it to access an existing folder, any existing folder, uh, that will work too. But I'm just going to create one. You should uh, make sure the user and the group are correct. So in this case, the user and group are temp, and the folder is temp, so temp owns that folder now. And chmod 700 temp. So we now have uh, one folder that our user is going to access. I'm also going to create a shared folder that multiple users can access. So we're going to chmod 777 that folder. So everyone can access the share folder and only temp can access the temp folder. Next what we're going to do is configure Samba with the shares that we just created. So edit uh, slash etsy slash samba slash smb dot conf. Uh, this has a tremendous amount of data in it already. Uh, you will probably want to back this up in case uh, you want to refer to it later. But I'm just going to delete it because I've got other copies. And I'm going to uh, post a link to probably paste bin with this on it. Uh, this is a example template. And I'm just going to save that. And here's kind of what it is. Uh, this top stuff is kind of a generic template uh, for global configurations. Down here are the actual file shares. So up here you're going to want to browse through this and make sure everything is the way you want it. Uh, I guess n the top thing, NetBIOS, uh, disable NetBIOS, yes. That just means that you will not be able to browse to the share by uh, slash server name, you're actually going to have to type the IP of the thing to actually get into it. 
that's how I do it but uh, if you want to be able to browse by server name you can uh, change that to no server string just change that to the name of the server workgroup equals workgroup unless you have a domain set up that doesn't uh, so much matter uh, everything else is uh, kind of boilerplate uh, this is set up not to share printers so if you need to share printers refer to the original configuration file for uh, some info on that if you do have printing enabled on Samba and you have uh, printing stuff set up or not set up or misconfigured on your Linux machine uh, then it can cause the Samba server to hang and lag and cause some weird issues so I just have it disabled on mine because I don't share printers and down here we have the shares so we have temp uh, this is our single user share we have the path uh, writable just says that a user can write to it browsable no and what that just means is uh, you can browse to the computer like I have here and it does not advertise that it has a folder shared there uh, you can still browse in that folder if you know the name of the folder so if you type in the folder uh, that's the wrong folder anyway if you browse if you manually type it in you can browse it but it doesn't advertise it uh, valid users temp obviously uh, create mask 700 and that just says temp can access the files but no one else can see them after they are created the next is the share folder this is going to be accessible from multiple users so we have a separate folder for that writable yes browsable no uh, valid users equals and down here we're going to have multiple users separated by comma space so these users don't exist but temp does so it should be able to access that too create mask 6777 and directory mask as well and that just creates the folders with that lets everyone access them so unless you manually lock down the files they're going to be shareable uh, for everyone okay so uh, I believe we yes we configured Samba but it's still running with the old configuration file so we're going to have to restart it and it's just gonna take that new configuration file and apply it and uh, we're gonna set the password of temp because you, I, I believe you need, actually need to set the password after you install Samba for that synchronizing to happen I'm not sure but I'm gonna do it anyway so now the account should be fully synchronized uh, we have share and temp set up so let's go to our Windows machine and see so we do have uh, we can access the server Samba's running and this is take number two I already connected to it once uh, and reinstalled Linux actually but we can access the temp folder and create a file and it's on our Linux machine in the uh, temp folder. Now if we go to share new text file and we have a text file in there as well and you can see that uh, the file in temp is readable, writable, and executable from temp but nobody else, no one else has any permissions and this file in share is uh, accessible from other users as well so if you have a second user with a personal folder and then give them access to the share folder they should be able to exchange files just fine and that's basically it you uh, may want to go in here and mess with the configs some more but other than that we have a working system here So, I hope this helps, and I'll see you next time.